Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Glenn and today I'm here with Steve from Fangio. Steve, tell us a little bit about Fangio. Yep, Fangio is a daily fantasy sports company. We're here to make sports more exciting. Wow, and how do users interact with Fangio? Yeah, we've got a desktop a website and we've got a mobile products on iOS and Android. Right, with about 50% of people using it through the mobile yep, platform. depending on the phase of the game actually. So primarily through live scoring, we have more people using the mobile to watch the live scoring experience. Okay, and sports being seasonal, I'm guessing you have to deal with a lot of scaling challenges and uh, mm -hmm. on a weekly and a seasonal basis as well. Yeah, and we, we call ourselves a sort of hyper growth company. So we've, over the last years, as the products got more popular as well, we've, we've got this 5x growth year on year. Right, and today it's roughly 6 million users using the platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe if you can just draw up for us, what is a, a service is made up of lots of different uh, services. Just draw up what an example service may look like within Fangio. The interaction with the service is, is through a load balancer, uh, an ELB. We've got a, a 82 instances here that uh, use auto scaling. And uh, we, we sort of encompass this in a, in a cloud formation stack. And so that takes care of your compute and application requirements. What do you do with data storage? We deploy them through CloudFormation again. We primarily use Aurora for uh, persistent storage, and we use a number of other things like ElastiCache. OK. And so at this layer, you've got roughly 40 different services making up the FanDuel platform. Mm -hmm. What do you do at the data layer? Is it as simple as one database per service, or do you have a kind of a smaller collection of databases supporting multiple services? Yeah, the services that require sort of persistent storage just get Aurora. Some things use uh, pre-computed caches. Some mm -hmm. things back things to S3. Um, so it really very much depends on the service. OK. And interesting, so when you look at this, uh, you're scaling of the compute layer using auto scaling to deal with that more kind of real world transaction. How are you scaling the data layer? It's quite hard to scale data. So um, you need to do things like um, populate caches. You need to warm, warm databases up. So these, where this is sort of more real time scaling, more sort of minute to minute auto scaling, the, the data stores get scaled more seasonally. OK. So while this is scaling seasonally, this is more here in that Sunday peak mm -hmm. afternoon for you for the yeah. NFL game, for example. Absolutely. What about in terms of how you do your release management into this environment? Are you using pre-baked AMIs or just upgrading in situ? Yeah, so along with this, I should draw a, a sort of another instance that's not in service, but our tooling logs into this instance, brings it up to date with config management and upgrades the software, uh, creates an AMI, creates a launch config from that AMI mm -hmm. all through the APIs and uses that to update this auto scaling right. group. So when you push a release and you're doing multiple releases per day, mm -hmm. you just take an EC2 instance, remove it out of the ELB, apply the new AMI image, then bring it back into play again. Alongside this, we effectively pull each instance out of the, out of the load balancer uh, in production and deploy to it. Excellent. And so this is you know, obviously production. You've got four of these services. Uh, what are you doing for test and performance testing, et cetera, as you make these changes through to the platform? For this season, we, we want to test scale, so we've got a like-for-like -like performance in testing environment uh, with, again, a sort of, yeah, as you say, another 40 services, mm -hmm. exactly mirroring production, all the same kind of sizing, all the same kind of scaling rules and uh, database sizing that we can sort of hammer to test load and check that the site will stay up. Right. When we were talking earlier, you mentioned you've got over 400 stacks mm -hmm. running mm -hmm. uh, for FanDuel across this. What about in terms of, you know, we've got a computer, we've got data, what are you doing with session management across this, you know, across all those services? Well, yeah, so sessions might be sort of closer to the users. So we've got the website um, sort of shared session. And whereas these, these instances are ephemeral, we use something like ElastiCache to store session persistently. OK, so using sort of Redis down here is mm -hmm. ElastiCache. What about in terms of data analytics? I mean, one of the things we talk about a lot with web platforms is they can generate a lot of uh, information around how users are using it. How are you collecting that information? Users on the apps may publish to something like uh, Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. For business intelligence, we actually use a combination of EMR and Redshift to pull data out of these service tiers and into this data warehouse. Okay. So using EMR and Redshift to actually manage the data analytics side. Mm -hmm. Going forward, though, you're looking at services like Kinesis, for example, to get more of a real-time view of what's occurring. Yeah, and to, to, to sort of change the interaction between these services, because where an interaction with this service goes through this load balancer and gets a request response, um, we're looking to event-driven architecture using okay. So you're going to see Maybe this Kinesis. potentially moving towards more of a Lambda-style you know, serverless architecture. Excellent. Steve, thank you for running through. This is your architecture for Fanduel. Thank you very much. <laughs>